Hello, and thank you for tuning in to my talk. My name is Maria Molina, and I am a project scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. This study focused on the application of machine learning to create skillful forecasts of severe weather, which we defined as thunderstorms that produce large hail and or tornadoes. I'd like to acknowledge my teammates and researchers on this project, including Yvonne, Merrick, and Nadia, as well as our research mentors, Mark, Sam, Clem, and Greg. The research I'm sharing during this talk was conducted as part of an eight-week research sprint that occurred this past summer of 2020. The program is called the Frontier Development Lab, which consists of a public-private partnership between NASA and industry to help accelerate research progress, uniting machine learning experts with physical scientists to work on several predefined challenges that include space and earth science research. Our research challenge was supported by NASA and Lockheed Martin, as well as Google, which provided computing support on their cloud services. Our interest in severe thunderstorms stems from the fact that the hazards they can produce claim lives and cause substantial economic damage. The average warning lead time is approximately 15 minutes for the contiguous United States. While the forecast skill of National Weather Service meteorologists is high, decreasing the number of false alarms remains a priority and can further increase public trust in severe weather warnings. Societal exposure and costs associated with severe thunderstorm events have been increasing in recent years, particularly over the southeastern U.S., which further motivates our work. Previous studies have shown that increases in flash rates detected in ground-based lightning data can be a precursor signal to severe weather hazards. Therefore, lightning is a potential indicator of what a thunderstorm will do next. Lightning data from the geostationary lightning mapper on board the GO-16 satellite, which became operational a few years ago, is underutilized in severe thunderstorm research. The continuous data stream of GLM data that spans the full disk view of Earth at a high temporal cadence presented us with the opportunity to explore its utility in severe thunderstorm forecasting. The GLM is an optical sensor that captures images of the full disk view of Earth at a rate of 500 frames per second. Its spatial resolution is about 8 kilometers at nadir and 14 kilometers at the edge of the disk. Machine learning helped us synthesize and analyze the large amount of satellite data. By automating the detection of meaningful patterns in lightning preceding severe hazard development. With the wealth of lightning observations from GLM's unique vantage point, we asked whether we could generate skillful forecasts of tornado and hail hazards with just GLM data. GLM data can be represented as time series information. Using eight GLM derived quantities as visualized here, we built time series from a 60 by 60 kilometer area centered on the coordinates of tornado and hail reports and the central coordinates of severe thunderstorm warnings that were not associated with severe reports which we considered as our non-severe class. Each time series consisted of 60 minutes of GLM data, which ended at the severe event start time or the time when the warning was issued. From those 60 minutes, we did not consider the last 15 minutes for model training because those minutes were denoted as the now casting lead time. Thus, our model used 45 minutes of data in a certain region to assess the probability of a severe or non-severe weather event within the next 15 minutes. A supervised learning framework was used to train our model using ROCKET, which stands for Random Convolutional Kernel Transform. ROCKET transforms the multivariate time series information using a large number of random convolutional kernels into features which can then be used to train a classifier. A substantial difference between this method and a neural network is that the weights and biases are not learned, but rather randomly generated. 
This characteristic makes Rocket extremely fast and simple to use, yet powerful due to the large number of convolutional kernels used, and these convolutions effectively translate into features. Once the features are extracted, a classifier can be trained, and we use the XGBoost library to train a classifier. XGBoost stands for Extreme Gradient Boosting. The diurnal distribution of the test set we used to evaluate the time series model resembled the climatological distribution of intense spring convection that occurs over the central U.S., with a peak during the late afternoon hours. We were curious whether the model had challenges during non-peak hours due to some of the environmental differences between storms that occur during early morning hours as compared to the evening hours. We found that the time series model trained using 10,000 random convolutional kernels was able to correctly classify severe thunderstorms with a lead time of 15 minutes during the late afternoon to evening hours. The model was also able to correctly identify the larger number of non-severe thunderstorms that occurred after 21 UTC. However, a comparatively larger proportion of misses or false negatives relative to true positives occurred at certain non-peak hours like 13 and 19 UTC, suggesting that the model was somewhat limited in identifying severe events during earlier daytime hours. This result suggests that lightning activity may be substantially different preceding severe thunderstorms that occur during non-peak hours increasing the difficulty of distinguishing between severe and non-severe events. These results were consistent among models trained with varying numbers of kernels, therefore the signal was likely not specific to model hyperparameters, but rather physical in nature. The time series model trained using 10,000 random convolutional kernels and evaluated using a 15-minute lead time shows that approximately 75% of our test data was classified correctly. In other words, our model correctly classified severe and non-severe thunderstorms approximately three out of four times. The results plotted here also show that varying the number of random convolutional kernels used for training the classifier impacts the ability of the time series model to correctly classify events. Fewer kernels, result in lower skill. However, as the number of kernels used exceeded 10,000, the frequencies of correct and incorrect classifications did not change appreciably as compared to the 10,000 convolutional kernel model. The model also exhibited sensitivity to lead time as would be expected. Longer lead times result in diminished skill. Interestingly, however, the changes in correct and incorrect classifications were not as substantial with lead times shorter than 15 minutes, suggesting that the important features in the 45-minute lightning time series are useful during the initial 15-minute lead time window. Performance diagrams contain skill metrics that focus on predictions of the severe class and results for the 10,000 convolutional kernel model with a 15 minute lead time, suggests that the model is able to skillfully classify severe events with few false alarms. The figure on the left shows that the model has a critical success index that exceeds 0.6 and a false alarm ratio below 0.3 for all probability thresholds used as indicated in the circles. And the model also has very little bias when using a probability threshold of 0.5 to create the binary predictions. Results are generally consistent across time series models trained with various numbers of random convolutional kernels, but skill as measured here increases as the number of kernels increases, suggesting that a larger number of kernels can help extract important features in the lightning time series data. The figure on the right shows that increasing the lead time decreases the model skill, as measured by the performance diagrams. 
analysis of the median values of GLM quantities for correct and incorrect cases provided us with some additional insight. Focusing on the blue lines, which are the correctly classified storms, the severe cases generally have a higher magnitude of flash extent density, while correctly classified non-severe storms have a comparatively lower magnitude. These results suggest that storms that produce severe hazards have more lightning activity than non-severe storms, which is possibly related to storm intensity. The incorrectly classified cases, which are the red lines, lie somewhere in between. Interestingly, there are opposite signals in the false negative and false positive cases. The median flash extent density for false negatives begins to increase from the true negative curves around 30 minutes before the event, whereas the false positives decrease as compared to true positives. These signals are consistent between the extent and centroid density variables and suggest that there is information at the 35 to 15 minute marks that could be exploited to further improve the model. While GLM time series data did show us that there are clear differences in the lightning signatures associated with severe and non-severe storms, we found that distinguishing between hazards, such as tornadoes and large hail, was more difficult. This figure shows that flash extent density patterns are quite similar preceding tornado and large hail occurrence. More work is needed for distinguishing between severe hazards. Overall, results show that skillful classifications of severe and non-severe thunderstorms can be achieved with a 15-minute lead time using GLM data and a time series modeling approach. Results also show that a higher number of random convolutional kernels can lead to improved skill scores in our modeling framework, including with the critical success index and the false alarm ratio. Machine learning was able to identify patterns preceding severe thunderstorm activity that were useful for storm classification. Therefore, satellite-based lightning data and machine learning provide viable options to improve forecasts and scientific understanding of severe weather for public good. We would like to acknowledge the FDL team and research reviewers which provided very helpful guidance during our research sprint, as well as the public and private partners that made this research possible. Thank you for tuning in.